Legacy Maker, the All Sports Network. Hello, everybody. Darrell Lawrence, Legacy Maker Sports Network. We're here live. <laughs> Russ, what a game. Here live. UVA, the 25th ranked UVA Cavaliers took on the Florida State Seminoles in a in an epic one. This is almost 95 all over again, 31-24. They asked him about that Warren award done play for 95. Coach Manuel said he hadn't seen it, but I, I'm pretty sure he's probably going to try and look that up now. Yeah, I mean, it was an amazing game. Uh, you know, the uh, – Cavaliers had to come back in the end, make a, a, a crazy comeback in the end, uh, but they were able to persevere even after uh, Delaney missed the field goal that kind of looked like it was going to be a tough moment, but the defense prevailed. Yeah. They were able to get things back going in their favor. Uh, and then the crazy goal line play here at the end, just almost remnants of that 95 game. And uh, UVA, 3-0. and They stood the test of time. And what were your thoughts overall? Uh, overall, I thought the first half was a little rough for Perkins. Uh, made a little bit of a mental mistake on that first drive when he got the uh, interception in his red zone. But second half, he came out on fire. I think he, it was his first 13 or 14 passes he didn't miss. Had that perfect uh, com- perfect drive, no, you know, no incomplete passes for that touchdown in the second half. And Joe Reed just came out of nowhere, started himself as another weapon that the UVA could use. And the defense just held strong. They, this is, they bended a little bit. Yeah, a little, little bit. A, little, a couple of like amazing third down conversions by FSU. But they, they bended, but they did not break at yeah, all. Yeah, that penalty. The penalties on the last drive were a little bit crazy. But oh, nevertheless, man. this team went in here. They're 3-0 and for the first time in a, in a long time. Yeah. So uh, I should mean, crack the top twenty next week. Yeah, it should, I really think they yeah, should. Yeah, they. I mean, twenty five coming in this week, but they should be yeah. in the top twenty next week. Next week is Old Dominion. Old Dominion is a team you can't look past because they've been growing the last few years. They beat Tech a few years ago. What are your thoughts on that game right off the bat? Uh, if they play like they did, and of course you know clean it up a little bit aside from that last drive, I think they'll be fine. I mean, they they got the weapons. Tal Papa came back tonight after being unavailable last week, um, so that was big for them. And a short yardage uh, weapon that they. Had had near the goal line for him just it was easy for them to just hand it off and if old dominion lets him inside the red zone again like they did tonight i expect him to come up with another two yard uh, two scores yeah three touchdowns for the young man just an amazing performance ladies and gentlemen we'll see you next week next week will be myself and tyrone montgomery odu versus guys back. U- guys back odu versus uva i'm darrell Lawrence. this is russ Telefero, legacy maker sports network congrats ty on your wedding that's right boop, boop. <laughs> Well, I'd like to uh, credit first uh, Coach Taggart and Florida State. They they played hard, and they played uh, a full and complete game right to the very last play. And anyone that was in the stadium today witnessed an amazing football game with two teams trying as hard as they could try to win. And I felt lucky to be part of it. I'm really proud of my players and staff, um, the work they put in, and to have another tangible take away the progress is being made and then to have so many people come and support us was uh, so gratifying to not only myself but my staff and the players and I, I think they've worked really hard and have earned the chance to have that kind of support and so it was gratifying to see it and to feel it and to, to recognize that it had an impact on the game it helped us win and that was um, 
I'm appreciative of that from the student section to the fans, to the upper deck, to the, 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 um, the hill in the end zone. It was just like, man, what an amazing setting. And it, it felt like um, good football uh, on a national stage um, and, and worthy of that is what it felt like. Um, I've already apologized to my team for my personal foul. It's my first ever. Um, and, um, yeah, I didn't set a very good example in that one case. Uh, really pleased with Bryce. Um, the adjustments we made at halftime offensively, um, the way he, he played and led our team, the two-point conversion, um, our defensive heart and effort was magical. And uh, I'm just, yeah, I won't forget this one ever. So I'll, I'll take whatever questions anyone has. Jeff, what what changes did you make without giving away any secrets in the fourth quarter, particularly offensively? It just became clearer finally what we are able to do, how we're going to need to do it, um, and in what time we needed to do it in. And those things just became crystal clear at halftime. And while it didn't manifest necessarily in the third quarter quite as much, um, the fourth quarter looked similar to our opening drive, and those two things had um, those two drives and those two uh, instances had some things in common that we found. Well, we believe that was going to help us win the game, was we, and it did. Such a, a wild finish at the very end. What was your vantage point on on them running the play with? I guess three seconds when they snapped it. Did you expect them to clock it, and what did you see from you guys defensively? No, I expected them to run the play, and our defensive staff did a really nice job getting. They had no timeouts, so um, I I expected them to run the play. They're an up tempo team anyway. Our defensive staff did a nice job of getting the call in, um, and the player that had the ball for them is a phenomenal football player, and it was a wild and hard fought and effort filled and physical finish to a game that basically looked like that the whole time. And I don't, I wouldn't question at all what they did. That's a tempo team. That was, that was a normal play to a very good football player. And they thought they could win. Some of the penalties leading up to that. And I mean, obviously your personal foul, we know what you thought about that call, but in general, all those flags, what, what was it like to sort of live and play through that? Yeah. Um, I don't know if I can describe what it was like to live and play through it, but it felt like we won the game about three different times, but then we didn't. Doug? Yeah, uh, Wayne had three touchdown runs. Talk about him in the short yardage situations, particularly since he was not available last week. Yeah, I, I love Wayne. His heart, his consistency, his trustworthiness, how physical he is, how mature he is, um, and the combination between he and Bryce in the short yardage situations they, they just wouldn't be stopped. And yeah, it wasn't pretty necessarily, but short yardage isn't really pretty football. And But it was effective football. And so I really liked um, what I saw from Wayne, uh, the team. There were plenty of guys that was hoping that he would be smashing the rock. Um, and But Bryce Perkins was, was the one that I opted for. It could have been either one. Uh, good evening. Bronco, your longest rush tonight was 22 yards by Joe Reed on the first play of that winning drive. It looked different than anything I remember seeing. Was it indeed a new wrinkle, and what led you to choose that particular time? Yeah, um, it was a great call by Robert um, and I, and we needed a special play in that moment to get us out of that hole and to change field position as fast as possible, and he deserves all the credit. Um, we had run that play once or twice before with Alameda Zacchaeus, and, um, and so we've kind of had it on the shelf but been working on it, and the, the call that Robert made at that time to get the ball to Joe in that way, man, that made a huge difference. Coach, it looked like Bryce Hall had grabbed the jersey when Terry got by him and moved the ball from the 30 to the 15 on that final drive. Was that the one where three officials threw flags? Or? It looked like it. Yeah. And then down the sideline near where you guys were, and then he's in on the final stop, put that out of his memory pretty quickly. What does it kind of say about him as a player? It's just how um, so defensive players, but corners in particular, have to have – the shortest memories of maybe anyone um, in sport. And, yeah, I'm, I'm glad they tried Bryce again.
after getting three flags, the chance that that happens again or he doesn't make the next play, not so good for the opponent. Um, so fitting that, that it went to his side again and he had an influence on winning the game. You guys drive down and score what looked like the uh, game-tying touchdown. Delaney misses the field goal, but then the defense responds with a three and out. How monumental was that, and what does that say about your team overall? Do you better respond that way on this stage? Our team uh, was given the task. They had to play harder, longer than this particular team. And our culture is built for that, and our players are built uh, to do that. And to see them actually um, accomplish exactly that is, uh, is really gratifying for not only them, watching each other, the, the coaches, but hopefully anyone that watched them. They, they tried their hearts out tonight. Bronco, uh, Bryce was red hot in the second half, I think 17 and 19 with a drop and a throwaway. Uh, besides that, he had the incredible fourth and two run and then the scramble on the two-point conversion. Is this what you dreamed of about him when he got here? Yeah, how do you stop him? I mean, we, we don't have – we're not growing the program at the whip, the rate we're growing it without Bryce Perkins. And he plays within the system really well, and he plays outside the system really well. And we need both. And he is, he's, yeah, he's exemplary. I mean, I just, um, I'm so lucky he's here. And we're so lucky he's here, not only by how he plays, but who he is. And he was, um, yeah, without him, we don't win. Bronco, in your time here, have you ever seen a replay of the Warwick Dunn play in 1995 here? I haven't. Okay. You need to. Because okay. it was eerily similar to tonight. Awesome. I'll see if I can jam that in my schedule. <laughs> Bronco, this team, Florida State, was probably the most dominant team during the formative years of your teams growing up. Um, does the fact that they trailed almost all night and still found a way to come back and, and, and win this say more than it would if it was just some old schlep team and instead of, you know? Yeah, when you put it that way, yeah. Um, <laughs> How do you spell schlep? I don't know. <laughs> Coach, there's been so much focus on Bryce Hall at that cornerback spot. Nick Grant was a guy you said refused to get off the spot, refused to get off that spot. Granted that we can discuss that P.I., but he seemed to have an incredible <laughs> night. He really raised the bar. It seemed like, what did you think of his night and, and how he, integral he was in this? He made an amazing play to help us win the game. Um, he played well all night, and he was targeted all night, and he withstood it um, like a champion. Stuff, so let me ask you about Perkins' interception in the first half. You said during the week that you weren't worried about the decision-making. What did you see there, and how do you think he shook it off? Oh, I think it's just the same uh, kind of scenario that uh, that he uh, threw some interceptions in the week before, just out of the pocket and just trying to do a little too much. And it's a fine line. And uh, if I have to – if I have to, I would much rather rein him in. And uh, so I want an aggressive quarterback. I want him to try to make plays, and I want him to think he can make every play. And yeah, on occasion, he might not. And so we just looked at each other and, okay, mm -hmm. onward. I'm sorry, we did miss this, but uh, Armstrong was not available. What is his situation, and how big a concern is that that you don't have your number two? Yeah, our, our, our number two will be out. Um, I don't have a, a time frame in regards to that. That uh, injury happened in the William & Mary game. We'll wrap up with Jeff. You started uh, four sophomores and a junior on the offensive line, though Dylan worked in some. Uh, overall, it's a very young group. It had some problems early, but did you feel like they got better as the game went on, particularly Se late? Second half and fourth quarter, I saw progress. And to, to see that execution at that time of the game against that opponent um, in that context, that's priceless in terms of the growth that happened. And so I'll... I'll um, everything that happened up to that contributed to their performance in the fourth quarter. So that's still a group that's growing and developing. Uh, but what a time to grow and develop and then perform well. Legacy Maker, the All Sports Network.